tell them buy at least a bird. Mine clear is for kids. Buy at least a fur. And you can have your wife back. I ain't keeping her. To try to rob you was the only reason I even speak to her. Till I found out you was fronting. Let me go back and forth and crush your hairline for nothing. Fucking dummy. It's so I'm here with the, the, the magnificent MC, great guy. How about Peace. that? Yes, I like that. Beautiful. So, yeah, great guy. Tell us about your, your background and how you got into music. So... Um, in regards to making music, it just, music was always a hobby of mine. Like I started writing rhymes very, very early. Like I used to write poetry and, you know, those poems naturally progressed into write, you know, into, to making music and, and end up rhyming. And so then in, uh, probably like ninth, 10th grade, I end up, I end up starting to do you know, just starting to write down music and write it down in my pad, and then I would let little certain people hear the music, and then you know I would like let my brother hear it, my older brother. I would let my uh my aunts hear it, and they would be like, "Oh no, nah, that's dope, that's dope, that's dope." But then I got so engulfed in the streets at a young age that you know the, the street life kind of took precedence over the rhyme. So, but I always rhymed. I always would go to the studio. But yeah, man, it started it started early. It started probably when I was like probably 14, 14 years old. And then just recently, like the last two years, I really said, you know what? I'm gonna take it all the way serious and I'm gonna do, I'm gonna uh I'm gonna just do nothing but music. I'm gonna leave these streets alone and I'm gonna just do music. Okay. So you kinda are a little seasoned. You come out at a time where studio sessions were like thirty-five dollars an hour. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's the dopest session you ever had? Mm. I would say when I, I would say the dopest session recently was being in the studio with 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 uh, Rock Marcy, DJ Premier, Cox, Knowledge. And that's the day I signed my signed my deal with Rock Marcy. That 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 got to go down as one of the illest days because you know I I, I waited for that that moment for so long. You got a beautiful smile, but yeah, I wait, I waited for that I waited for that moment for so long that it was like that's 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 one of my I got one other one, but I gotta tell that one later. But that one right there. Was was that's my that's my most memorable moment and being in the studio, the best studio session, just to see how Premier and how everybody like I, I played a couple records at the end of the session mm -hmm. um, after I signed my deal and it was like they just to see the reaction of those people and you know like I look up to Premier I've been I've been a fan of DJ Premier and Guru for years and right, right. you know you know the way people look up to, you know, and the way I look up to Rock Marcy and to see him, you know, reacting to those records that he never heard before, that was just, a, that was a beautiful day. So what caught, what caught DJ Premier's attention? He's like been around for a long time. So with Primo, he was like, so Primo was actually getting ready to leave. Um, and he was in the booth, like, like Rock had just laid down some verses, right? So Primo was, I was, I was playing my music in the A room. Primo was in the booth, you know, putting together, putting the headphones and picking everything up. And he was like, man, I heard that coming through them headphones. And he was like, man, I had to, I had to stop what I was doing. Like, man, what the hell is that in there, That's man? Right. <laughs> yeah. So that was, that was super dope. That, that's what, you know, but it was just the lyricism. The, uh, and like he said, the authenticity of, of what he heard, he like, nah, I could tell that you, that you really did that shit you talking about. Well, you did. <laughs> <laughs> in, in the in the uh, so you put out an album eight months ago. So yes. I went in and I listened to the entire album. It's hard, like for for it's reminiscent of the recipes that you could have for old school hip hop. So mm -hmm. what was the inspiration behind that? So the inspiration behind Snow Day was just. Let me take them and let me, because everybody talking about hustling, everybody talking about this 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 work and this and all these this things they did in these streets, but ain't nobody talking about it in a different way. Everybody right. everybody referring to it and talking about it in the same exact way. 
So I said, you know what? I got a story to tell, but I'm going to tell a real story. I'm gonna, my story is, I'm sure, is different than a lot of rappers' stories because, you know, like I don't embellish too, too, too much when I rap. There's some right. embellishments there, but I got to tell the ups and the downs. I got to tell what really happens when you get into the street life and, and the things that really happen. So, you know, the, the inspiration was just just basically the life that I lived for all this, all this time. And it's just not being inspired by the people that I listened to when I once believed lived that life. That right. was my inspiration. Oh, wow. That's crazy. So <laughs> now hip hop and staying in the same vein of that, not bending to mainstream music. How have you sustained? Uh, I mean, you know what it like for me is just, I really, I really recognize who my, who my core audience is mm -hmm. and, you know, I just serve my core audience. Uh, you know, I do have a lot of records that that could go that way. Right, right, um, right. Like on my like on my new EP, there's some records on there that my core audience may feel like is a little too polished. But you know, for me to sustain the the the, the you know the the fan base that I have, all that I got to really do is just feed them, and it just you know hopefully you know pray that it gets bigger and bigger, and that they because when you give them what they want, then they put their friends on to it, then the friend puts somebody else on. Then he put his uncle on and, you know, it just naturally gets bigger and bigger. Right, right, right. So, yeah, that's 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 my thing. My, my, my trick is just really just honing in and knowing and understanding what I have and what I have to give to the people and, and really knowing and understanding what they love me for and giving them that and giving them that only. Right. Oh, you did it with this with this album. Um, so you have a single. Thank you. Like, I listened to all the singles, all the singles bomb, like when we talk about hip hop, it can go both ways. Some hip hop was hardcore, like bops. Then you have other forms of hip hop that was so much a bop, but like different. Mm. <laughs> Let's say that. <laughs> Yours is like definitely a heat. You, you definitely packing some heat. So one of those songs that I liked was Wolf. Uh, with Joy Majors, what was the inspiration behind that track? It's great, God, homie, and all is well. It's for the ones that shoot with their left hand so they can catch their shells. Uh, just being thankful, man, and just saying, listen, I got in and I got out unscathed. Right. <laughs> let me stop playing with the with, with the man upstairs and let me just do this music. But just, you know, just that the inspiration for that one was, yeah, just really just thinking about how many people that I lost along the way and, mm -hmm. and how many people doing time behind that lifestyle and saying, you know, just giving thanks and, and giving praise that I'm able to still be here, do interviews with, you know, beautiful people such as yourself and say, damn, <laughs> this is the real story. You understand? Like, this is. This is what this is what happened in my journey, but this don't really happen nine times out of ten. So before you get into that life, young men and young women, think about that. Think about can you really like you know handle what's going to happen when the people come, when the people try to kidnap you, and things of this, you know, all of the real shit that happens that, that a lot of times that we don't bother to tell you because we too busy and too busy embellishing and showing prominence in these records. Well, you know, it's kind of like uh, I interviewed somebody recently and it didn't dawn on me until I started researching. Like, this Joker didn't even, this wasn't this Joker's lifestyle. Like, what was he talking about? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. And then, so, so, so at, at that point when you realized and came to that realization, did you feel cheated? Did you feel swindled? I didn't feel swindled because if you look back, you know, without saying any names uh, to some of his, his material, he alluded that it wasn't his lifestyle, but if you talk about it enough, you kind of forget what was said in the beginning. Mm. You listen, it, you're, you're going along with, okay, well, this is this is interesting when it's like, hmm, I didn't feel cheated. I just felt like you should be authentic to who, who you are. You know, right. if, that's, if that's the, if, so just like writing books, I'm an author. I'm an author first. I'm a writer first. So I'm going to always okay. pin something every now and then. I may put out virtual videos or virtual interviews, but I'm an uh -huh. author first. And I was always told how you start is how you finish. And that is mm -hmm. the first impression that you leave with people. 
So be authentic in what you're what what you're putting out. So right. I feel like even in the rap world, it's so um easy to to put on a facade. It's so easy to be something that you're not. Like uh six nine, well he got the wheels whipped off of him. And I'm not <laughs> trying to get into a lot of he got the wheels whipped off him and the dog comes down. What are we doing with that? But that goes back to being someone who you're not in your lyrics and you're not living that, that lifestyle. Right. Right. You know? And like you said, that when you got that facade up, you got to keep it up too. Like, right. It's like telling a lie. Like, you got to remember what you lied about and all of that. Is, it's too much work. Right. And then, you know, like in his case, it proved you it proves to do you a disservice at the end. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh no, nah, oh, you're not even that. Like, okay, now we're gonna just do we're gonna have our way with you. Listen, he should that should never have happened, okay? Like he got the wheels whooped off him. I, I hated to see it. And I <laughs> don't <laughs> let you know what then I grew up there, he got the wheels whooped off him, okay? And then left him on the axles. <laughs> Uh, in the in the hot tub, all places like that is just no. So somebody tried to teach him a lesson. So it's kind. Of, it goes back to what you were saying too about just warning the young men and just trying to be a bridge instead of a uh, booster cable. That's the word. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So what else do you have going on? So right now, I just turned in my my new EP. It's a self-titled EP called, EP called Great God. Um, this one is no it's no records that mention cocaine. Because, you know, like once I, when I put out Snow Day, a lot of people tried to put me in a box and say, oh, that's all he could do. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right. So for me, this one, I really wanted to prove that, nah, man, so many more layers to Great God than that. Than, that was just that part of my life. Right, right, right. But I've been, I, you know, I'm an excellent father. I'm a great father. I'm a, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm good in my community, you know. So it's, it's so many more layers that I didn't give them in Snow Day that I gave them in this new EP. So that's coming out under uh, Rough, Rough Nation. Uh, Chris, shout out Chris Schwartz. Shout out uh, Mike, uh, Mike James, that put that situation together for me. That's that'll be coming out November seventh. Mm -hmm. so, I feel like uh, in um, Snow Day, you had unfinished business. Mm -hmm. And you needed to get that out before you put out the the revolutionary material. That's the, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I wanted them to feel like they was growing. You know what I mean? Like grow with me a little bit. But mm -hmm. yeah, I, I you know, because once you give them like like even this this record that I'm releasing, I couldn't put all of the best stuff on there because then we're, you know, I don't want to put a ceiling on myself. So right. it's just showing that, oh, no, nah, his son, can, he, he got a lot, he got a lot to say. Right. And no matter, like, and like what we said about being authentic to self is that no matter what I say, as long as I'm being, as long as the people perceive it and they see, oh, no, nah, he being authentic, they, it don't matter what the subject matter is about because they, they, they respect the authenticity of what I say, and they know that when I give them something, at least it's gonna be authentic. Whether I'm talking, to, whether I'm talking about a woman, or I'm talking about my children, or you know, whatever, going shopping, whatever the case may be. So, this this EP, I'm I'm very very proud of it. Um, the artwork is very very dope. Um, I think I'm gonna release the artwork next week, and then I'm gonna release the track list, and I'm gonna start talking about some of the features. I got uh. Two features on on this one, just like the last one. I don't really do a lot of features, but your features have to uh, connect with your level of of rap. Like you're not rudimentary. Let's just get that. Let's make that clear. When mm -hmm. I'm in the category of hip hop, because hip hop, depending on what era you you learned about hip hop, it could have been corny back then. You know what I'm saying? Like right. some, too too far back into the '80s is corny heading into the late 80s, the thing was popping where we literally had something to say. So right. you are from the era of the 90s, although they arguably the late 80s is the golden era. In my opinion, the 90s is the golden era because that's when it got real. So right. when you think about 
your level of expertise when it comes down to lyricism. You have to have somebody that can flow flow with you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I can't imagine that you would put get somebody who was whack on your songs. Yeah, no, nah, I got I got some I got some dope brothers. Um, I I, I tell you one of them. Uh, I got Rome Streets on the album. Mm -hmm. Um. Rome is very dope, and he 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 really rose to the occasion on there. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, I got right. my man, I got my guy Phil Mo Green from Chicago. He, so all of the, the the features that I did put on there, they really, really, not even that I they not they didn't even shock me because I knew when I you know selected them to be on those records that they was gonna do their thing, but they definitely upper echelon MCs when it comes to to that lyricism. They definitely was very very sharp. I was very proud. I hate listening to, to records that I do features on and I just want to skip to my part. <laughs> and I'd be like, damn, like, you know what I'm saying? But not, these brothers definitely brought their A game. Right. Well, if they go in and listen to um, your previous uh, Snow Day from last year or eight months ago, it's not even a year old yet, they're going to see that. They may see one subject line but like I said I really felt like you had some unfinished business that you kind of had to uh get out before you stretched yourself for this project so do you feel like you stretched yourself do you feel like okay this is the most creative project yet uh nah it's not the most so the, so my thing is when I put together records my mm -hmm. goal is to at least put two records on the on, on the on the project that I feel have never been done. Right. And that's hard to do. It's like, yeah, what haven't been done in, at this point? But I feel like that I did that with Snow Day with Thanks for Nothing by giving the world the fiend's perspective, the, right, the, right. the perspective of the user. And on this one, I got two records on there that definitely different perspectives, like different, different. So it may not, you know, the best work is, is when I maybe two EPs down the line. Like, some of my best work is going to come out on the project with me and Rock Marcy, the God Brothers project. Mm -hmm. um, we we putting that out sometime this year, too. So, that... Well, this that, year's like, short. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Rock, is, Rock, Rock called me with some exciting news a couple weeks, like, last week, and he ready to put... He ready to drop something ASAP. So, yeah. You, you, you might get a... You might get a double play. But okay. uh, that's... Some of my best work is on there, but when I feel as though that people is really honed in and they really, really, really asking and they want to know who great God is, then I'm gonna give them the the the, the best work. Okay, it's done. It's it's done and it's recorded. I'm just I'm just being real meticulous when it comes to when am I gonna give this to to everybody? ASAP. <laughs> <laughs> ASAP. Yeah. Sometimes we need some bops to go to the gym with, like, uh, you know, just to flow with. I remember I, I went on my first date <laughs> like two months ago, and I'm listening to R&B, and I'm like, wait a minute. Why not? I need something else. This is just not what it's hitting for. This is giving me false, false, false stuff here. I need some real music. So then I'm going to go back to the Jeezy and get back to myself. So I okay. feel like... <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> You right. said that was on your first date? Bruh, I went, I was straight tripping. I like <laughs> <laughs> So you mean to tell me you you had you had uh uh last time I checked I was the man on these streets playing in the <laughs> I done went to Jeezy. I'm like, nah, I can't nah, I'm listening to RB music, bruh. No. Let me let me get back to my let me get back to myself. So <laughs> dope. that's dope. That's dope. Okay, okay. Kind of needed to put you in a different headspace, if not to level the playing field. You know what I'm saying? Especially if it's yeah. going to be a versatile album. I'm not saying so versatile to where you're singing. And if you know you can't sing, I would not recommend that. But <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to put it, drop it at ASAP. You know, like uh, time is ticking. So, and time is money. Um, and with that being said, can you give our viewers, because you have this cloak, this mysterious look, kind of like MF and Doom, what brought about, and I, you don't have to go into too much detail, but I feel like I got to tell the people who you are, at least, um, as a uh, great God. Mm -hmm. So the story behind the mask is, I just really want people to 
pay attention to what's being said and not who's saying it. Okay. There's so many artists that that give you so much to, to look at. And then guess what? You get caught up in their relationship. You get caught up in what they're wearing and they watch and they jury and all that. And I just feel like that I want them to just hone in. I want you to hear these darts. I want you to listen to the to the lyrics. And I want you to just be engulfed in the music. And then I'll take the mask off. I'm going to take the mask off soon. It's getting hot. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but uh, I'm going to take it off. But I want them to I just want them to really know and understand, like, oh nah. If all I got to do is listen to him, like that's that because you ain't gonna like the relationship and the cars and the and the jury and all of that, that's cool. But I want them to really be engulfed in the records and and and, and the rhyme and you know, and then I, I just enjoy my anonymity too. I could take this mask off and I could walk right through the crowd when I'm done doing a show. Right. I, I just go and change clothes and, and walk right back through the cloud and hear what people feel about do you know what I'm saying? Right, 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 <laughs> I just right. sat around I just sat around and talked to a few fans and like, oh yeah, nah, Sonny, yeah, all right, yeah. You know what I mean? Well, only because I <laughs> I know the music. Let's say that. So Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now did you complete the documentary bars? Tell us about that. The Bars documentary is done. Um, I decided to break Bars down into a series. So right now I'm just shopping it to a couple uh, to a couple networks. And um, it's done. Bars documentary. Bars stands for Buffalo, Albany, Rochester, Syracuse. And what I did was that was my contribution to upstate New York, which is some place that I moved to, you know, in my 20s. But I'm not really, I'm not actually was born and raised there. So... I got to see and I got to know the people that's really that's just doing something, the people that's moving and the people that you should watch. So it's like the AR's handbook of mm. I went and got I went and interviewed everybody that's that's presently hot. Some some, you know, the, the radio DJs from upstate that, that was doing their thing that made the underground people hot. You know, right. to see it that the Sierra Monet's out of Rochester, the DJ Bandana Blacks, you know, the Just Mikes and DJ Maestros in Syracuse. I went and I went and, and talked to the DJs and just more importantly, you know, talk to some of the up and coming guys so that the people can say, oh, yeah, it's it's a lot going on upstate. Let me go get him. Let me watch the documentary. Let me go get him or let me go get her. So that was my contribution to upstate New York. Even though you're not from there. So where are you located now? Uh, I mean, I live in Syracuse right now. I, I've been living in Syracuse since 1999, going back from Syracuse to Brooklyn, Brooklyn to Syracuse. Um, so I'm, I'm actually I'm in New York City right now doing the interview. But uh, yeah, I live in Syracuse. I love Syracuse, and, and you know why I love Syracuse is because a lot of people would tell me like, "Yo, you still live out there?" Something like, "Damn, you went out there and got caught up." Nah, I, what I would did is I went up there and created a legacy for me and a bunch of other people. And I just showed that a geographical location has nothing to do with success. They said, oh, well, what you going to do? It ain't no labels there. It ain't this and that. But we did everything that we did off of from North Salina. So I'm proud of that. And I love Syracuse. And I love the support that I get from the town and, you know. Syracuse got a lot of dope artists too, man. You got to watch out for them, man. You'll you'll see some of those young guys on a on a bars documentary. But yeah, man, we got a lot of talent in the three one five, and we're gonna show y'all what we got. You know, um, and this is this this speaks to you you being seasoned um, and where you are now. You always pay homage to your people. Now, how do you stay level and not let your ego get in the way of business? Uh, ego is something that I learned a long time ago that just don't, you know, when you really mature, because you know us, we mature a lot later than, than ladies, you know. Right. <laughs> so that was something that I learned very, very, very early is that an ego really don't have no place in a man's toolbox. Right. Ego, ego, ego is the destroyer of everything. You know, when you start showing prominence and arrogance and ego and Right, right, it right. Just, it just puts you in places that you don't that you don't need to be. It puts you in situations where you 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 think out of out of your ego and, and you reacting from ego and you reacting from arrogance and that's how you end up on Rikers Island. That's how you end up 
in, in, in Auburn facility and stuff like that because you you you're operating out of ego. So that was something that I learned very 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 long time ago. Like now I got to get rid of my ego and I got to master myself, and then everything else will fall into place. Okay. Now, do you feel like you're serving other people right now? Yeah, I, I would say that I, I would say that I am. Um, I get a lot of I get multiple DMs, emails, and you know, people that show their appreciation to say, hey, man, you helped me get through this or that. Or just people that say, hey, man, I never got a, I never got my favorite artist to even say thank you, let alone leave a voice memo in my DM, you know, <laughs> things right. of that nature. I, I try to be a lot a lot more personable than because I know what it feels like to be revered. I feel I know what it feels like to have a spotlight. So. You know, to give somebody else the spotlight or, 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 you know, you never know what you could do for somebody's day by just checking up on them randomly because they've been posting your music. Right. You know, I, I, I hate watching people's live and all they do is look in the camera <laughs> and look at what else they're doing. They don't like you don't want to you don't want to you don't want to talk to nobody. Right. You don't want to acknowledge these people that bought your albums and that bought your records and they're supporting you, Um, you know. People that I, I I look at people's IG posts, and if I see you, if I see your post, and I don't see you say thank you to nobody, I'm I don't even follow you no more because right. that's arrogance. Like how dare you not talk to nobody? You right. don't follow. You know, it's bad enough you don't follow nobody, but you don't even talk to nobody. And these people telling you how magnificent you are and how much they adore you and they revere you. Like, nah, it don't take I, it don't take much time to say thank you. I appreciate it. Right. And you never know what that could do for somebody's day. Well, you know, some people are not there yet. Because <laughs> we're talking about there's a difference between influencer versus a, a real person that's wanting to humanize the experience. That's you right. Know? That's right. That's right. So, you know, influence is only out to do that one thing, and that's just to gain notoriety, gain attention. Right. But, you know, when you humanize the experience, then you're going to acknowledge people and make them feel like they are somebody. So that's right. When people know. tell you about your smile on your page, what you say? You, you, <laughs> let me, I got to go. I got to go check your face. See if you one of the people that don't say thank you. No. Uh, so I'm very funny about certain interactions because I'm not okay. one of them. It, look, small comments don't easily sway me. Okay. Uh, because I'm old, I'm older. <laughs> okay. I'm much older, but I'm much older. So um, I say thank you for the most part, but you know, like when that DM gets to jumping, I'm like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> when they jump off that trampoline into the DM, on when, when they get bold, get somebody else to do it. <laughs> okay, I know that's right. Yeah, I just think that's important, though, man. I think that's very important, and I think that helped build my fan base too. Just right. being being personable and saying thank you and saying like, hey, listen, I appreciate you, baby. But, when that mask come off, <laughs> we said when it come off, what? That's gonna that's gonna do it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. When the mask come off, that's gonna do it. Right now, you are like a hidden figure, a hidden figure, hidden gem. Um, yeah, you know, uh, there is mystery about you, and those who don't know. We'll soon find out. So right. my next question, and this is my last question, or just two, is a twofold question. Do you have okay. any other projects or merch? And where can our viewers follow you? So everybody can follow me at Great God on all platforms, G-R-E-A, the number eight, G-A-W-D. Uh, the merch is on greatgod.com. Watch out for the tour. The merch, I'm just actually dropping a new merch line today. Let me show you a little piece. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, so the merch, the merch is my finger, it's my hands, right? Mm -hmm. And so when you see me do that with my hands, that's an L and a seven. That's level seven, right? Right. So that's God, the God flow. You know what I'm saying? That's that's the highest level of flow is the level seven flow. You know what I'm saying? So the merch is, will be available this week on greatgod.com. And then, yes, watch out for the God Brothers EP with me and Rock Marcy. Me and Havoc is from, from Prodigy. I mean, Havoc from Prodigy. Havoc from Mob Deep is working on an EP also. Me and my God Brother Dial, we working on one. So, you know what I'm saying? 
Alcatrax. Yeah, we 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 got we got EP, I got like four or five EPs lined up. I got one with Billionaire Boy Scout that's done. I, I'm really a worker. Um, I still get up and do three records a day. So, you know, an EP is only seven records, so it's easy to knock out an EP in just a weekend, even, you know. But yeah, that's what's coming up, man. I'm real excited about the Rock Bossy, the Havoc Project. And uh also, like I said, November 7th, go get that self-entitled EP called Great God. On Rough Nation, shout out Chris Schwartz, shout out Mike James, shout out Sal Pacino, man. And, uh, you know, also shout out Angela and my man uh, Tuan, too. Well, congratulations on the new deal. I wish you much success. Uh, I do have one more question, and it's ju okay. just about your spirituality. Um, because you, I don't know, are we allowed to talk about this or how yeah, no, it coincides no with you rapping? Like, how does that work? That's a very interesting question because I stopped, I would start and stop rapping for that, for that fact, because, you know, they say that you can't be held accountable for what you don't know, right? Right, right. But right. when you know better and you still don't do better, then that's a thousand times worse. Right. So I would, uh, you know, in Islam is called a Munafi Kun, and that's just somebody that's, that's a hypocrite, right? Sure. So I never wanted to really be a hypocrite. So I, I I found it very hard to do music and talk about the things I'm talking about as if as if I don't know that that's not the right thing. So that's why when you get snow day, you get the pros and the cons. So mm -hmm. I so I just I just you know walked a very a very fine line and 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 I also like to implement the lessons and you know the spirituality in in the records at the same time. Because I because I do know and understand that I gotta each one teach one. You know what I'm saying? My 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 duty is to teach the next person. So uh yeah, for that, for that reason was a reason that I took a break for a long time too, because I always felt like, man, like dang. Like it's some like I'm gonna tell let me take give you an example. I got a record that's very, very, in my opinion, is very amazing, right? Right, right. I put all of my nieces, my daughters. They singing on the record. My nephews is singing on the record. And it's about children holding on to their dreams, right? And I said to myself, man, when I put this record out and then they go back and they listen to Snow Day, they're going to be like, man, what? <laughs> we, can't, we, can't, we can't download. Uh, we don't want our kids listening to this. So it's like situations like that is, that I'm very conscious of. It's like, but then again, it's, you know, it's harder for people to understand and take heed to certain certain life lessons if they feel as though the person never lived through it. So right. the people that do appreciate me, I appreciate that they appreciate that because, you know, certain people can't talk to the youth because the youth is going to say, oh, man, you ain't never did that. You ain't never been through nothing. And I have been through it. So, you know, it's, it, you know, for me, it's like a 50-50. It's like, dang, man, it's, how do I, how do I balance it out has been something very hard for me to figure out. But I feel as though right now that I'm on the right track and not being too preachy, but not also embellishing and just, you know, you know, uh, talking about the negative all the time, too, and glorifying the negative. Right, right. And that's yeah. why I feel like um, Snow Day was just something that you had to get done and that yeah. you needed to say because, I mean, you got flow, but you had to address that before you moved on to the next project. So I'm here with Great God. I appreciate you so much for taking the time out to speak with me. And I am going to say thank you because I am not an influencer, okay? <laughs> thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I appreciate you. I appreciate you for having me. Thank you. Absolutely. Now, I don't know. Did you give your Instagram handle? Instagram. Everything is Great God. G-R-E-A-A-G-A-W-D on all platforms, Instagram, Twitter, OnlyFans, all that. Great God. We got action. Thank you. Tell them buy at least a bird. My Claire is for kids. Buy at least a fur. And you can have your wife back. I ain't keeping her to try to rob you was the only reason I even speak to her. Till I found out you was fronting. Let me go back and forth across your hairline for nothing. Fucking dummy. It's